Hey, Parallel here from PurposeYourMaster.com and I'm going to talk about taking action, taking consistent action. After transitioning from college into the professional world, I compromised my health for the sake of money because that was my definition of success. The money in my bank account, how big my house is, the fancy car that I drove, or even how beautiful my woman was. But all that changed when I defined my own definition of success. Now my definition of success is the contribution to my growth and that of society. And along this journey of transforming my health, I discovered the four pillars of my life. The first pillar is health. And I read books on it. But the two most influential books that I still use today or the first is The Wild Diet by Abel James. And in it, he talks about eating nutrient-dense foods that include vegetables that doesn't have pesticides, animals that are healthy from pasture farms. And he also introduced me to a lot of recipes that are very healthy and delicious. So who says eating healthy sucks? The second book is Bigger, Leaner, Stronger by Michael Matthews. And he emphasizes on compact exercises such as squats, deadlifts, military press, bench press. And all these research is backed by science, also by his anecdotal experience as well. Counting your calories, meaning eating enough macronutrients to fuel your body, eating enough protein. That was one thing that I wasn't doing before. And that was my biggest takeaway from the book. The second pillar of my life is wealth. And wealth to me is not about money, it's about impact. And the first book that helped me was The Millionaire Fast Lane by DJ Marco. And he talks about the law of affection. The more people you could affect, the more money you could make. Or you could just affect a few people, but you could charge them thousands of dollars, you could still make a lot of money. The second book in wealth is The Education of Millionaires, and that's by Michael Ellsberg. In it, he talks about the importance of learning practical skills, such as sales, marketing, leadership, and public speaking. These are skills we don't learn in school. But these are the soft skills that get us ahead. You could have the best idea in the world, but if you can't effectively communicate that to your boss, or convince your significant other to watch a certain movie, then your idea is completely useless. When you think of marketing, you might only think it applies to businesses, but that's not true at all. We all have our own personal brand, and that brand is what people think of when they hear our name. What do you want people to think of you when they hear your name? Is it something positive or is it negative? This is especially important when you apply to different jobs, because these are things that people think of you when they hear your name. The third pillar of my life is relationships. And the book that really helped me was The Way of Superior Man by David Jetta. And in it, he talks about masculinity and femininity. I know masculinity has a negative connotation nowadays. It's about being this macho man and not caring about what people think, but that's not it. It's a well balance of some of that, but also showing emotions and vulnerability. When I step into masculinity, I ignite the femininity in her, and it's a beautiful dance that we get to do. In my presence, make her feel comfortable, safe, protected, and inspire confidence in her. That was a game changer for me. The second book was Normal Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. And in it, it's about killing a nice guy, saying yes to things that truly serve me, and saying no to things that don't. It's about setting boundaries and knowing who I am. I just tell my boss that I can't stay after six every day. I want to use that time to work on my health, social life, or anything that I wanted. As a result, I gained a lot of respect from him because I was able to set boundaries, something that I thought I was never able to do. The last and fourth pillar of my life is personal growth. The first book that really helped me was As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. In it, he talks about our mind is a sacred garden, and the thoughts that we fill it will eventually grow. If we have negative thoughts, then it will grow into weeds that trash your 
mind. But if you plant seeds of health, you can blossom into beautiful flowers or big strong trees. And that's why I surround myself with positive people who believe in me and lift me higher rather than people who drain my energy and break me down. The second book is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. In it, he talks about resistance and fear, how to become a professional and adopting the mindset of a professional. And that is to show up work no matter what. The other biggest lesson is the more resistance or fear I have towards something, then the more definite that I need to do it. I have learned to lean into my resistance and lean into my fear. I'm the product of my environment. I have used these books to help me become the person that I am today. Reading these books is completely useless if I don't apply the knowledge that I learned. I'm not going to get in good shape if I don't go into the gym and apply what I've learned. I don't have the relationship that I have if I don't go out and apply the knowledge with other people. Now I'm in the best shape of my life. I get to make an impact and the income that I want doing what I love. The income's not there yet, but I'm working on it. And because I'm on the journey, that already makes me a success because that's my definition of success. The relationships I have, I'm not settling anymore. I treat people with the same respect that I want in return. In my personal growth, I lean into my fears and I've overcome them. Although I'm still human, I don't get fearless. I still fear the fear, but I still do it anyways. Now I want to challenge you. What's an area that you want to work on? Is it health, wealth, relationships, or just personal growth? Are you being consistent with your actions? If not, then it's time to make a change. You have to earn what you want in life because life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And if you haven't worked for it, then you don't deserve it. Take health, for example. Are you going to the gym five days a week? Are you consistently eating healthy, nutrient-dense foods? Stop looking for that magic pill that will fix everything because it doesn't exist. You have to master the fundamentals. There's no shortcut. You have to do the work. I apply the 80-20 rule. 80% of my time is taking action and 20% is consuming information. If you want the life that you want, then you have to take deliberate and consistent action towards it. In the process, you also become the person that you want to be. Now, if you have any questions about this video, please leave them in a comment below. Till next time, bye.